Welcome to the Perspectives on Healthcare podcast, where members of the medical community from different roles, venues, and locations share their unique perspectives on quality healthcare, its future, and how to improve it. Now, from the Your Keynote Speaker Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, here is your host, Rob Oliver. Thank you and welcome. I appreciate you being here today. Today we have Jen Silba. She is a certified peer specialist in mental health. She is the author of A Dove in the Shadows. She's a member of the millennial generation and she is from Pennsylvania. Jen, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's jump right into this. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your role and background in healthcare, please? So yes, I am a new author. There's my book cover. Um, It's called A Dove in the Shadows, My Mental Health Recovery Journey from Patient to Professional. And it came out about a month ago. And it was really important to me for it to come out during um, September, which is Suicide Awareness Month. And um, it is about my 20 year uh, journey as a patient in the mental health system, Um, just stuck and suffering and lost and broken. Um, And then it uh, captures my 10 years um, also of being in recovery and going back to one of the main hospitals where I received most of my treatment, um, which was UPMC Western um, here in Pittsburgh, PA. And I worked there um, as a certified peer specialist for 10 years to help others um, that are still stuck and broken and lost like I was. Um, but now since I'm in recovery and, and doing well, I was able to, to go back and face those challenges because I needed to let other people know that they can also recover and, and live, you know, meaningful lives. How much of a difference do you think there is between hearing that message from a professional and hearing it from someone who has gone through the experience? Yeah, that's, that's a really great question i feel like it's so much more like genuine when you know like you know hey you know you you've been in this er and you're here with me right now you know what i'm going through like it it just seems so much more genuine than a doctor saying oh yeah you can you can one day get better you know it has to has to have a connection that you can trust that person and believe that person and, and, and see, and see that person that, Hey, you know, you used to be just like me and, and, and you're now, you know, total you're, you're different, uh, but you still get, you get it, you know, you just get it. Yeah. I, I would imagine. So I'll just be upfront with this. I've got a spinal cord injury and there are you know, I deal with it for the most part and there are, but there are days when it's hard and there are days when I struggle. And I would imagine that hearing the message that says there is hope. And yet at the same time, I would imagine that the, the mental health journey is not a journey where you arrive at the top of the mountain and you just stay there and you are fixed and you no longer struggle. Am I properly characterizing that? Absolutely. You know, just like your medical condition, um, and and any other conditions, um, you know, people in mental health, um, I'll I'll just speak for me personally, I definitely, I still struggle. Um, I do, you know, say that I'm in recovery um, because I'm, you know, happy, hopeful. Um, I've uh, become somebody that I never thought I could be. It's just so much more of a progress than I used to be you know, constantly in the hospitals, you know, on 50 plus medications, um, 200 plus shock treatments, like my life revolved around the the mental health system, doctors, hospitals. So that is all more stable now. But yes, I still, um, you know, struggle with depression. I'm actually currently (laughs) 
prepping to get my little light box out that I have for, um, you know, it's, it's getting, you know, darker sooner. And <laughs> I have like kind of a little bit of a seasonal effect of uh, disorder thing. So I, I got to get that out. And yeah, um, every day is, you know, a, a new journey. It's not so much of a challenge as it used to be or a struggle. But, you know, there's just key things I need to make sure I do daily um, and notice when I'm, you know, maybe not so much on track. But, yeah, it's definitely ongoing. Okay. And I think what I'm hearing you say is that as you are in the recovery process, you begin to look at the tools that are available to you to assist you in in maintaining your current state and, and you know, and in continuing down the the path to happiness and and fulfillment and avoiding depression so i am assuming that's one of the other messages that you're able to share with people is there are there are supports in place there are tools available that will help you in this journey so that you're not you're not all on your own right i mean everybody you know comes from different backgrounds everybody has different experiences life experiences different relationship experiences. Um, but somehow we can all, you know, come to a common ground and meet there and support each other, um, be non-judgmental of each other, be, um, you know, supporting. <laughs> um, I, and just welcoming and, you know, just treat people, accept people for who they are and meet them where they are, which is great. Uh, yeah, okay. absolutely. Good. So what does quality healthcare mean to you? Quality healthcare means to me that it is readily available. Um, working in the ER that I did, um, there are a lot of struggles to have enough services available. I know people would come in, um, they would, you know, meet criteria for inpatient admissions, and then there'd be no beds. Mm -hmm. So even though we are a large, we're a large hospital, um, and the whole hospital is dedicated to psychiatric care, we are one of one of the only hospitals around that, that have that. People are coming from out of state sometimes out of the country to come to us. But then it's a challenge for us. We don't have enough services. So I, you know, would be there with the people, try to, you know, encourage them that, you know, they can get through this part of their journey and on to the next. And I just feel like there needs to be more of availability um, even if people didn't meet criteria for inpatient admissions, you know, they were given a number to call, but then their appointment would be a couple weeks just to get into services, get a therapist. So if you're coming to us in a crisis, nothing's really going to change. The more likely to, while you're waiting for your appointment to come back to us to, you know, there, there's no, <laughs> there's just not enough. Okay. And, you know, I let people know that, you know, we're only a part of this puzzle. And I just wish there was more community availability, more crisis centers out in the community. Um, there is Resolve Crisis Center um, where people could stay also if they need to. Um, but I think it's just, I think there just needs to be more mental health services um, in the community or that offer um a place to stay somewhere like a like like a hospital maybe not inpatient but there needs to be more you know um more even more hospitals like western okay and, and what i'm hearing you say is that there are people who are in a mental health crisis that don't necessarily need inpatient care but they need more urgent care than being yes. in, than getting an appointment yeah. a week or two down the road they need to they need help right. closer right closer to now okay can you right. you've kind of done this but can you give me an example of quality health care i would 
would say an example of quality health care would be say somebody you know walks through our doors they are they have their issue whatever that might be um whether it's crisis related um or just need services i would say um a good example would be okay hey you know what i haven't seen a therapist in a couple years i'm i'm kind of you know heading down a path again where i think that could help me um we would be able to um assess the situation and you know possibly agree with them and i would you know hope that we could provide something that would be like okay well in a in a day or two you can go see this person um i just feel like there is availability out there for services and i i just feel like it, it needs to meet, be in a more timely matter okay uh, so not a lot of people have heard of a peer specialist so what do you wish people understood about your role in healthcare? Yeah, um, I I would say that I just want people to understand that, um, you know, especially in the emergency room, um, you know, we really had to educate um, our coworkers that um, our doctors, um, there's uh, like security officers. Um, so we would be, you know, possibly sitting out there. And one time I was um, listening to music with, you know, somebody that was waiting. I know music is a big part of my life. And, you know, they really just, you know, love music also. And music is a, a coping strategy to, to help you thrill. Um, so I want people to know that we're not, we're still professionals, even though we, um, we connect with people differently. Um, we don't, it's a little unconventional, I guess. Um, so we're not, we're still professionals, but we're not people's friends either. It might appear like, oh, hey, what's your favorite song? Oh, hey, I like that band or, or something like that. I, I know when I was working out in the community as, as well, um, you know, somebody invited me to their their kids birthday party it, it's because there's there's a good relationship there and you can relate to somebody but we're um we're kind of right in the middle between like a professional and a friend so we do um absolutely have to respect boundaries and that can be you know very hard because we do you know have deeper conversations because we have more time with people so we get to know you know maybe about their family or maybe you know, talk about music or talk about, you know, what's, what's going on this weekend. It would seem like a friend, but yeah, we're, we definitely have boundaries to keep and to make sure that they're not crossed. Sure. I, is there a certification process for peer specialists? Is it, what's the, what's the process to become one? Uh, there is a process. I don't know other than the state of PA. Uh, so there, well, when I got my certification, um, it, it does cost uh, money to apply and to go there. Um, sometimes OVR will help you with the cost of that, or are there other programs in the area that could uh, help with the cost of that? Also, if you're hired within UPMC, I know that like within the, they give you like within the first year um, to eventually get the training and they might even pay for it. But yes, there is, um, like I said, it was a long time ago and things have changed. I know through COVID, uh, there was like a two week course, um, where for me it was eight hours a day for two weeks. Okay. Um, so it's almost like a, like a college class or something like that. You had to, you know, be very responsible. You had homework at the end of the day. Um, you had to participate. Uh, so it, it was, um, you know, stressful for me, sure. um, um, you know, at how to travel downtown. But like I said, I think that they have 
accommodated it better for people where things might be online now. Okay. Um, yep. But yeah, there is a process. Oh, and you have to get it like renewed um, every year. You have to um, have credits, um, okay. something like a certification. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Uh, what excites you about the future of healthcare? Uh, I just wanted, I'm very excited. Um, actually two nights ago, um, John Fetterman, he was on one of the late night shows, like at midnight or something. And he was being interviewed, um, about, you know, his making his, um, his mental health journey or struggle, uh, made public. So I just felt like, wow, this is, this is being addressed on you know national tv and being supported and i just felt like that was so awesome like people wanted to hear about it and they supported him for doing it and i just think it's great for people that have a higher up position um like it could be a politician it could be a doctor um because we're all human you know we're all you know, kind of the same on the inside, regardless of our status in life. Um, and I just felt like it was really brave and, and bold of him because I know he was doing it for a reason. And I think that's going to open up so many doors um, for other people to just be real about their life. Yeah. And I mean, what I'm hearing you say kind of between the lines is that mental health is becoming something that can be talked about instead of something that is uh, you're feeling shame and guilt and feeling that you have to hide this. It's now a conversation that can be had because there are people saying that, you know, I'm dealing with this as well. And, Absolutely. and those people are a lot of public figures who are joining the, the conversation, which is huge. All right. Last question for you. What is one thing medical professionals can start doing today to improve the quality of healthcare? I would say talk to your consumers, talk to your patients, um, have different ideas other than, than um, traditional medicines, have, like have conversations, just don't go straight to say, hey, okay, I'm gonna prescribe you this pill or you need this. I know um, I'm really, blessed and thankful to have a, a really good psychiatrist who's been with me through my journey. And, you know, he asked me about things I, you know, have struggled on the past with like pulling my hair and, and picking at it. And he, um, you know, ran into somebody um, or is treating somebody that also has the same struggle. And he's asking me, Hey, what has helped you, you know, deal with this? Because there's, I guess technically not a pill that would, you know, stop you from putting your hand to your hair. Um, I, you know, I put on band-aids. Um, so it was just, it, I think it's, it's good to like, maybe if somebody is well, when somebody is well or better from their struggle to, Hey, have a conversation with them. Hey, what, what was the thing there? What really helped you through this? I, you know, other than, maybe a pill you know so i was able to tell him you know and he might have suggested you know to put a band-aid you know that could have helped somebody and it wasn't necessarily you know a pill so it's just like thinking outside of the box and having the conversation with somebody you know maybe when they do overcome it yep so it's interesting because i was you went further than what i was expecting and so <laughs> I had someone on who was talking about mental health and said that um, a prescription without an addition of therapy, she considered to be in a, in, insufficient. So it starts with the prescription and then therapy alongside of that as another tool. But what you're talking about is how do we, how do we access the people who have been through this and allow them to share what has helped them and the tools that have been beneficial and the strategies that they've employed. 
so that right. it may be something that helps other people. Fantastic. Listen, Jen Sobaugh, thank you so much for being with me today. I appreciate you taking the time. I, I will put a link into where people can find your book, that where they can thank connect you with know. you on social media. And I appreciate you and I respect your perspective on healthcare. Thanks for listening to Perspectives on Healthcare. Visit PerspectivesOnHealthcare.com to learn more about Rob Oliver or to subscribe so you never miss an episode. If this podcast was valuable, we'd appreciate a review on iTunes. Or if you tell a friend or coworker about the show, that would be helpful too. Join us again next time for more Perspectives on Healthcare.